defense. There's the early shooting. Both teams struggling. Still, the pace of the game favors Northwestern. Lower scoring game will favor the Wildcats. Indiana scoring about 87 points a game. A whistle now and a foul on a trip. That goes on Dion Lee. One of the things that Indiana likes to do on their offense is get to that foul line. They were 20 of 26 against Minnesota on Wednesday. And this is Calvert Chaney's first time to the line. A lot of the free throws came in the second half in Minnesota's game because the Hoosiers were a lot more aware and a lot more aggressive going to the hole, especially Damon Bailey. Chaney's good on the first. He's now made 37 of his last 41 free throws. So he's racking them up from the line. Substitution, Chris Reynolds comes in for Indiana. Greg Graham is coming out. So that leaves Reynolds and Bailey at the guards. Henderson and Chaney at the forwards. Matt Nova at center. Northwestern still going with their starting lineup, and Chaney misses on the second one. Score tied now at 7. 15-30 left in the first half. Good pressure outside by Reynolds. Be a good matchup here, the quickness Baldwin and Reynolds. And that's exactly why Chris Reynolds was inserted. to slow Pat Baldwin down. Rankins outside, picks up his dribble. Baldwin takes it to the corner. Howe again working on the inside position. Good job of sealing the man on the high side. Caught the defender, rode, rode him up the lane. Good interior feed by Deion Lee. Converted nicely by Charles Howe. Indiana tries to bring it up quickly. Northwestern gets set in their zone, 2-3. Three. Here's Damon Bailey for three on the outside. He misses. Battle underneath. Henderson picks up a loose ball and gets an easy putback. That's being in the right place at the right time. He just happened to be passing through the lane, and hey, I got the round ball. Henderson, nine and a half rebounds a game. That's third in the Big Ten, so that's his job inside. Northwestern showed good patience on offense. They're waiting to get that ball inside to get a good shot. Good back picks. Here's the big guy Rankin, the backdoor play to Lee. And again, the backdoor play run to perfection. That's a dimension that Kevin Rankin gives this Northwestern ball team. At 6'11", the ability to step out on the floor, draw the defense, and then convert that nice backdoor play. They've been able to execute that extremely well. The thing to remember, though, Indiana is a great help side defensive team. They may have to stop, pull up, and take the five-foot jumper. Henderson on the baseline misses. I was at practice this morning. He must have taken 50 shots from that baseline, although he misses his first one tonight. 11-9, Northwestern leads. This crowd getting excited as Howe scores again. Good job by Charles Howe once again of riding Henderson up the lane, holding the seal, and not a lot of pressure, surprisingly, on the, on the interior feeder, having a clear path to the basket. 13-9, Chaney tries for three. He misses. And this crowd now becomes a part of the game. Long pass to Nellums, though, goes wild. And uh, the third turnover now for the Wildcats. Let's watch Howe on this play. Good job right there of Kevin Rankin stepping up the lane, drawing the defender. Deion Lee setting his man up. Right there, what you didn't see is what you'd see a lot of times from an Indiana team. Weak side defense sliding over to draw the charge. Northwestern. Believe me, Indiana will recognize that, as you know, Steve, and start trying to draw the charge. And that was one of the keys for Indiana going into this game was how are they going to play the inside people? And they haven't played them very well right now. Brian Evans in the lineup, throws an errant pass, however, it comes back to him. Rankin with the block. And we've still got a battle inside, and now a foul. And that's going to go on Deion Lee. Bill Foster looking for that three-second call. His team, uh, really, Sean, as good a start as you could expect for Northwestern right now. Well, that was one of the keys. They had to come out and establish themselves early. Calvert Cheney on the baseline is able to get that shot down. 13 to 11, Northwestern leads by two. That was a good move by Calvert in that. He's missed a couple of his early jump shots, so he took it aggressively to the hole. Got his feet underneath him and made a nice shot. Another backdoor play. The advantage of that high post offense, it really sets up the back cut, but uh, just off the foot that time, or it had been another easy layup. It was a tough pass right there. They were in kind of close quarters. The, the spacing was not what you'd like to see. It was not as good as you saw with the Rankin play, but still able to execute. I had another chance at an easy basket. Evans outside for three, and he's got it. First two times down the floor that he's in the ball game, he is a part of the offense. And Cheney made a nice pick. Even though this is a zone defense that time, you can pick against the zone just as well as a man-to-man, -man, and he got Brian Evans free. 
Deion Lee makes the drive inside. Calvert Cheney's going to pick up his first foul. There's a look at the Indiana bench. Bob Knight, Dan Dockage ready to make a substitution. A little deja vu, Steve Green, uh, similar to the start that Indiana had in the, North, in the uh, Minnesota game on Wednesday night. Oh, you're absolutely right. And that's one of the things I was going to be surprised that, that was going to happen tonight, but it has. Pat Baldwin gets a jumper on the out-of-bounds play. Northwestern takes the lead again. And good job of recognition by Cedric Nelms of the double team. Chuck Howell is able to take the charge on Evans. So Northwestern really playing a smart game at the start. Let's take a look. Okay, Brian Evans trying to be aggressive here, taking it to the hoop, but when you lower that shoulder and oh, out goes the left hand, you're going to get called. 15-14, we're at the 12-15 mark. Northwestern with a good start. Indiana's won 15 of the last 16 games these two teams have played. And that last victory in 88 up here in Evanston. Northwestern got a two-point victory. Taking their time now on offense. Shot outside by Nellums. He goes after his shot. And he's got it on the rebound. Good job of staying active right there by Cedric Nellums. The first shot was a little short. Stayed with it. The shooter always knows where the ball is going to bounce. And he just followed the flight. Pass inside by Reynolds. Graham uses a shot fake. He draws the foul and gets the basket. Great look by Chris Reynolds here. And I mean, he put something on it. Watch Graham working underneath to get free. And Reynolds just right now. And that pass has to be that sharp to get through. Great camera angle there to see the pass. And then the great shot fake. Deion Lee is going to draw that foul. And that's his third foul as he goes over to talk to Bill Foster. So a big play as uh, Dion Lee will probably be out the rest of the first half. You know, Sean Morris made a great point early on, and that is the defensive pressure on the pass coming in from the guard position or the perimeter for Northwestern. For Indiana's defense is not up on those guards. We've got a timeout with the score. Northwestern 17, Indiana 17. We'll be back after these messages. This is the Raycom Sports Network. Well, uh, I tell you, it, if, get, a, get a shot of Coach Knight because he's going to shit if they do that again. <laughs> gotcha. What do you got? Yeah, satellite. Oh, no. Yeah. <laughs> I told you when no, you first you started. <laughs> No, you did. I told you Sorry that. Sorry out there. <laughs> <laughs> but he will. <laughs> this telecast is presented by the authority of the Big Ten Conference Incorporated as intended solely for the private use of our audience. Any rebroadcast or other use of this telecast without the express prior written consent of the Big Ten Conference Incorporated is prohibited. And we've got a good Big Ten basketball game here. It's tied 11.30, left here in the first half. Northwestern off to a good start. Low scoring game. Baldwin outside, Rankin comes way outside. Northwestern tries to keep Indiana from their help inside. Number 30, Kip Kirkpatrick in the lineup for the Wildcats. This is Baldwin. He likes to drive. Bailey tries to make the block, and he gets called for the foul on the shot. A good shot there. The Northwestern students sit right behind the visiting bench, and they do not sit down the entire ball game. 
And that was them pointing the foul to Bailey. Let's take a look. Here's Pat Baldwin, as we mentioned before, his ability to get in the lane and create, draws three defenders, gets bailed out by the foul right there. But as we saw with the, uh, some of the initial backdoor plays, what we, what we didn't see on the initial backdoor plays, we saw there was a sliding over in the defensive help, drew a lot of attention right there. Yeah, good point. If it wasn't for a bailout foul, like you say, uh, that could have been a charge or at least a stop. First one is good by Baldwin. He's an 85% free throw shooter. See his season's average. He's got the second, 19 to 17. Northwestern by two. Right at 11 minutes left in the first half. Man to man defense by Northwestern. Evans fakes the shot. Anderson's on the drive, forces that one, misses off the board. Graham comes up with it, but Northwestern on the steal. Oh, another wild shot by Graham, and he gets it to go off the glass. Circus time. And Bill Foster's beside himself. Well, here's an example right here where hustle may hurt you. The ball is going out of bounds. He throws it back inbounds. Kevin Rankin does under his own basket, giving Indiana a second chance. You don't want to fault hustle, but there's an example right there where he might have just wanted to take the ball right out of bounds with him. Absolutely. Circus shot. You're right there, Steve Green. But one of the cardinal rules of basketball under the opponent's basket. Don't try that kind of pass. Don't save it there. Graham hits the free throw for a three point play. Gives Indiana the lead by one. Graham pressures Kirkpatrick on the outside. And now the give and go, Kirkpatrick gets the layup, Northwestern leads. But right there, Indiana really trying to deny the passing lanes. Kip Kirkpatrick set the defender up with a V-cut. He turned his head, he made him pay for it. Graham gets the ball inside from Reynolds. And another whistle. Foul starting to mount up now for both teams. This foul is going to go on Baldwin. Sean, let's look at this give and go again. We see Kevin, uh, Pat Baldwin stepping out. Kip Kirkpatrick going one way, coming back the other. The defender turns his head, makes him pay for it right there. Greg Graham now at the line. One of Indiana's better free throw shooters, 80%. He nails the first one. They called that a shooting foul. Well, yeah, and, uh, Sean. Indiana's on the road. Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's right, Sean. You, you seem puzzled about that. <laughs> that's right. Two, two of us <laughs> agree that's a shooting Yeah, that was foul. two to one. <laughs> And the second one goes. Indiana pulls back ahead. Several lead changes here. Number three, Matt Purdy in the lineup for Northwestern. Another back cut, this time to Nellis. Good pass by Kirkpatrick. Kip Kirkpatrick did an excellent job right there looking off the defender. He made the defender look like he was going to throw it to his wing. He followed the eye fake, made him pay Cedric Nellis. 2-3 zone again by Northwestern. Bailey's in the corner. Tough to shoot over a big guy like Rankin coming out on you. Lob pass nearly stolen. Here's Bailey. He gets it away before Rankin can get there, but throws it off the top of the backboard. And Northwestern gets the ball. Chuck Howell comes back in for Rankin. As Bailey also leaves for Indiana as Todd Leary checks in. This is a very key sequence, a few two or three minutes for Northwestern with Kevin Rankin on the bench. They must not allow this lead to slip away. They have to get some good shots. And for Indiana, their big scorer, Calvert Chaney, also out of the lineup. Steal as Henderson steps in on the weak side. Indiana, a one on two fast break. They slow it up. Five turnovers now for Northwestern. Reynolds puts his head down and goes to the basket. This time, Howell gets called on the blocking foul. Now, there's an aggressive move by Chris Reynolds, something that they did a lot in the Minnesota game. Now the question is, who's there first? And you're right, always the never-ending question. Hal thought he had time to get there. The official gives Reynolds two shots. Hal picks up his first. Reynolds is good on that free throw. That free throw means Indiana soybean farmers will donate $50 to Gleaner's Food Bank Network. Be soy smart. Always look for soybeans on your food labels. Reynolds 65% on the year. Calvert Cheney's back in the lineup for Indiana. Brian Evans is out. Reynolds cans two of them there. 
Indiana regains the lead by one, 24-23. A seesaw game here in the first half, 9-13 left. Good battle inside now with Henderson and Howe. A lot of back picks are set by this Northwestern team. They're really taking Indiana away from that help side defense. And the back picks are coming way high. Gives the offensive player plenty of room to move after that. You can see neither, uh, not a lot of players in that blue area until that ball comes right down inside, as it does this time to Nellums. He misses on the shot. Indiana fights for the ball. Here's a three on two. Graham tries to dish to the right, and it goes off Chris Reynolds to Northwestern. Good pursuit right there by Matt Purdy. Indiana had the numbers three on two. Matt Purdy ran the floor, got in the passing, and was able to deflect it, knock it off the Indiana player. Bob Knight not happy with the advantage Indiana had there, not coming away with the shot. And Northwestern gets it on the turnover. Folks, I tell you, Northwestern's awareness of when a man gets open is as good as I've seen in a long time. It's one thing to get open, but it's another thing to make sure that the offensive man with the ball knows how to get it to you. There's another one. Kirkpatrick open for a second. He misses the shot. Here's a two-on-one now. Reynolds over to Graham and the layup. Good job there as Reynolds didn't commit to the last second. Indiana would like to see more of that, a little bit more up-tempo, run Northwestern up and down a little bit. 26-23, the first time somebody's had a three-point lead in a while. And Northwestern's going to make some substitutions in a hurry. A steal by Henderson comes right back to Kirkpatrick. And Henderson recovers again as Howe was open inside. Yeah, good recovery by Henderson that time. Indiana 26, Northwestern 23. We'll be back after these messages. There's a person in your hometown you really ought to meet. Maybe you'll find her at the high school, serving on the local school board. Or he might be over at the ballpark, coaching his Little League baseball team. One place you're sure to find him is your neighborhood Farm Bureau insurance office, offering auto, home, and life insurance protection to families just like yours. Your Farm Bureau insurance agent can protect your auto, your home, and your life. He's a good person to know. Amex Coal Industries proudly presents the high-energy play of the game, the outstanding individual play from IU's last televised game. Late in the second half, with IU down by two, Damon Bailey rebounds the ball and drives the length of the court for the layup out of foul. This gives IU the lead on their way to a come-from-behind victory, 61-57 over Minnesota. That's tonight's Amex high-energy play of the game. The high-energy play of the game from Amex Coal Industries. As part of the Amex High Energy Play of the Game, Amex Coal Industries is making a donation to the Bob Knight Library Endowment Fund. And there's a good look at Coach Bob Knight. He's searching now for his 465th victory at Indiana. Indiana right now with a three-point lead, 741 left. Northwestern ball under their own basket. Indiana struggling from the field at 8 of 19, only 42%. And Northwestern's been getting good shots inside. Here's one by Rankin, however, blocked by Henderson. Northwestern's 9 of 15, 60% on the game. Cheney, a long one from outside, is missed. The ball comes out long to Rankin. And Northwestern again tries to cut this lead. All of Calvert's misses have been short. Not getting his legs in the shot is what that translates to. Fine up top for the board. Northwestern doing a nice job on the boards. Fast break now by Indiana. Two on two, and Graham puts his head down and draws the foul. Well, Sean mentioned earlier how important this stretch 
is. And Kev, although Kevin Rankin is back in there, it still is a very important stretch for Northwestern to not see this lead start to, to expand. Eric Simpson, number 22, a 6'1 junior in the lineup for the Wildcats. As Graham gets back to the line. This is another key stretch for Northwestern because their other premier player, Pat Baldwin, is on the bench. He plays a lot of minutes between 37 and 38. We see him coming to the scorer's table right now. But uh, Eric Simpson is a very capable player, but he does not have the quickness to break down a defense that Pat Baldwin possesses. Graham hits the second and pushes Indiana's lead to five. And here comes Baldwin back in the game for Simpson. Matt Nover also in the lineup. Bill Foster knows he wants to keep this game close going into that half. He saw what Minnesota was able to do in Bloomington on Wednesday. Nellum's on the outside, has not scored as much as he does usually, and now a steal by Graham. Northwestern getting their scoring from their inside players. Here's Cheney, comes outside to Henderson, tries a baseline drive, he gets off balance. Throws up a wild one, but it goes off the Wildcats. Northwestern ball. There's Bill Foster. Out of bounds play to Henderson, and that's the shot he worked on this morning. That baseline shot about 15 feet. Well, prior to the ball going out, he had that shot and tried to take it in and make an easier shot, he thought. But he may have passed up the best shot he had exactly. all night. Northwestern right here, when they've been successful been able to score, it's been as a result of ball reversal from side to side. The last three or four times down the floor, they've tried to pound it in without an initial ball reversal, making it very easy for the defense to react. Here's Rankin. He misses on the jumper. Henderson pulls it down. Looks like he got slapped, though, in the face. And the official timeout right away as he's going to be checked by Tim Garl, the Indiana trailer. Let, uh, trainer. Let's see what happened. Kevin Rankin short on the shot. Oop. Looked like Nellum's got yeah. him with the left hand. And Henderson covers up right away. Here's on from underneath the basket. No matter who got him or when, that hurts. There we go. Ooh. Yeah, right there you saw, looked like a finger. Bob Knight on the floor checking on the 6'9 sophomore. If he got scratched, doesn't look like it, just uh, right on the eye there. He's going to come out, and they'll take a look at him on the bench. Gives Bob Knight a chance uh, to talk fishing with Verl Sell or uh, maybe something, something like else. That. Coach, I like Coach in situations like that. He'll come out, and, and it's another opportunity just to chat with one of the officials. <laughs> and if you believe that, Sean Morris, you haven't been in the Big Ten a very long time. I've got some swamp land in Iowa. <laughs> I like that all right, we've got a ball game. Indiana up by seven. 5.56 left in the half. 3-2 zone now by the Wildcats. Indiana trying to size it up. They go to Leary on the outside. His three is no good. Greg Graham leaps high, and he gets the tap. Graham started following that shot all the way beyond the three-point circle. He so knew if it came off right, he had it. 12 points now for Greg Graham. He's Indiana's leading scorer. Here's Kirkpatrick from the outside. Good block out by Leary. The ball comes right back to him. Northwestern starting to go cold from the field. Graham's going to light up another one. He misses it short. And Leary tries one. He's got his from the outside as Indiana starts to pull away. 35-23. And Northwestern wants timeout. We'll be back after these messages. This is the Raycom Sports Network.
increases Indiana's lead to a game high 13 right now. Look at this run. Indiana has outscored Northwestern 18 to 4. As Northwestern's hit the skin. Sean Morris, you said this has uh, been a problem they've had all year. This has really been a bugaboo for, for Northwestern. There's been a four or five minute stretch in either half, sometime during the ball game, where they just have not been able to score. They have not been able to get the easy shots at the basket. And when they have been able to get shots during that four or five minute scheme, they have not been able to convert. Only four points in the last six minutes. And Bill Foster calls the timeout. Here's Nellums inside. Shot was partially blocked. And it goes off the Wildcats. Indiana gets possession. Indiana is able to apply so much more defensive pressure at the guard slot with Chris Reynolds in the game. Now, I don't know what the score was when he entered, and it took a while for Indiana to get going, but he exemplifies the type of intensity you have to play defensively. Cheney misses that shot. Boy, a real battle on both boards in this ball game. We knew that rebounding would be a key. And Northwestern, the past two or three times down the floor, they've gone zone against Indiana, and one of the things you give up is man-to-man -man blocking out responsibilities, long shots, long rebounds. Indiana had a couple of extra shots. Northwestern comes out, alleviates that by going man-to-man. -man. Baldwin takes care of a basket for Northwestern, and he is really dangerous when you let him take that drive in the, bay, in the lane. Now, Sean, you talked about Northwestern's tendency to always have a four or five minute drought. One of the things with Indiana has been prior to halftime with a decent sized lead, they let it slip away sometimes. 357 left, so we'll see if Indiana can hold a little bit. A shot fake that time draws Kirkpatrick out and he draws the foul. Northwestern over the limit, so Graham will go to the line. And he gets the one and one. Indiana has improved its free throw shooting recently, especially in the second half. They're up to 70% as a team on the season after a slow start. Larry comes in for Chris Reynolds. the front of the rim, but Graham gets it to go. 37-25. Indiana leads, 350. Left now in the half. High pick set by Rankin as Baldwin tries to get open. He does. He's got a quick release on that shot, almost a one-handed shot, Sean. And he kind of pulled the trigger right there. Didn't get good extension or follow through. And once again, whereas Indiana's been able to get two and three shots down the floor, once again, Northwestern one and done. Indiana was out rebounded against Minnesota, only 21 rebounds. So I'm sure that's something they've worked on here in the last few days. Nova comes back outside. Here's Leary on the drive. Graham tries to penetrate. Good block inside by Rankin. Turnover back to Nellums, and he gets the easy layup. There's a good defensive play, turns into an easy basket for Northwestern. Well, Northwestern kind of returns the favor of the transition basket that Indiana's been able to execute in the first half. That basket was started with a block shot and then the outlet to Nellums, who released early. The lead now down to 10 points. Here's Cheney on the drive. He misses. Indiana slaps it away, and Graham's able to come up with it. Evans with the shot fake, gives him about a 15-footer, draws nothing but the backboard on a wild shot, and a good chance for Northwestern to get right back in this game. Yeah, it's Super Bowl weekend, and that was wide left, like a field goal. That's the back cut again by Rankin. Kirkpatrick misses on the reverse, but Indiana's going to make the foul. There's something that Northwestern hasn't been able to do since the first seven or eight minutes of the ball game is create the proper spacing for the backdoor feed. Rankin, you'll see coming up here, the high elbow, catching the pass. Nice pass. That's a tougher pass than it looks. He almost he has to get down low and create a passing angle right there. Kirkpatrick not able to convert, but Charles House slashing in there, giving Northwestern a second chance opportunity and a chance to cut into this 10-point lead with the clock stop. When that big man gets the ball up at the free throw line, he immediately looks under the basket to see if somebody's making a cut. Very good play by Rankin as Howe hits the first free throw and cuts the lead down to nine. Al out of Missouri City, Texas, eight points a game. A broken bone in his foot early in the year, so he's just getting back into the lineup since January 7th. Pat Knight checks in for Indiana. 
as Calvert Cheney uh, goes again to the Indiana bench. T.J. Rayford, 6'7", sophomore, number 34, is in for Northwestern as Hal takes a breather. Several substitutions. 2.17 left. Indiana's lead is down to eight. And their leading score now on the bench. Evans outside. Man-to-man -man defense. Ball slapped away, picked up by Evans inside to Nover. He misses it, Rankin with the block, and Northwestern gets the ball. You know, that was a really, a, a real good look by Brian Evans that time. Tough pass, good hands by Matt Nover, just unable to get off a good shot. All right, big possession here, 150 left. Northwestern runs to run a little time off this shot clock, and they can feel themselves closing in here on Indiana's lead. High offense, lob pass to Rankin. He gets the shot blocked from behind by Evans. And the crowd under the basket wanted the foul. Indiana ball. Rankin kind of snuck down the lane that time. I thought that was great recognition by him. Leary from the free throw line is good. Turnaround jumper as Leary stretches Indiana's lead to 10. Set his man up real well that time. He came off a pick, but he knew right where to go and the ball was there at the right time. Larry's got five points, and again, Northwestern will use some of this shot clock. We're at the one-minute mark in the first half. Indiana's lead is 10. Here's the back cut inside, and Kirkpatrick misses on the layup. Indiana has the ball, nearly a double dribble there by Graham, and uh, nearly loses it on the trap. Here's Pat Knight with a shot. He's got it from the baseline. About 12 feet, Pat Knight hits the jumper, and Indiana leads by 11. That's a big turn of events right there. That's a four-point play. Northwestern would be able, if uh, Kip Kirkpatrick was able to convert that basket to get it into single digits, he misses the point-blank shot, and uh, Indiana is able to go down and capitalize, pushing it up to a 12-point lead. Shot clock is off, 20 seconds left. Nellums drives the lane and misses on the shot. He follows and misses. Indiana will have a chance for the last shot. We're at eight seconds. Leary looks up at the clock. Evans with a three. He's long, a fight for the board. And Northwestern gets it, and that's going to be it for the first half as both teams retire to the locker. Bob Knight, team has struggled, but they retain the lead at the half. It's Indiana 41, Northwestern 29. We'll be back after these messages. This land is for our... Stepping up to the high post and creating the backdoor opportunities. Indiana was paid a visit by one of their big time supporters, Moose Scourin, the former Yankee and White Sox player. And I think Moose had some in common with the team, Steve Green. The, the flat top haircut for the guys out there for Indiana were matching hairstyles with Big Moose. Right in style. <laughs> Moose is a great one. All right, we're ready now for second half action. Northwestern has the ball. Deion Lee on the drive, he misses the shot. Nellums has the board. He misses, Northwestern really pounding it. Hal keeps it alive, and Deion Lee comes away with it. Big possession for Northwestern. If they can score the first time out of the box here, that can uh, really string them on here for the second half. A jump ball called now instead, and the possession arrow goes to Indiana, but uh, Sean, wouldn't you agree with that? Yeah, good job right there of doubling down by the Indiana defenders. When the post player sees that guy doubling down from the, high, from the high post, he must see the open receiver, and the person who is leaving the man must make himself available, must create a passing angle. Indiana tries to attack the basket, this time by Brian Evans. He's a left-hander. He loves to drive the middle from that right side, and he's able to pick up the foul. That goes on Howell, his second be a shooting foul, so Evans goes to the line. There, Brian was out at the three-point line, took a look at it, didn't want to put it up, made that nice drive to the middle. With that free throw, Indiana's 40,000 soybean farmers will donate $50 to Gleaner's Food Bank Network. Don't forget, Indiana soybeans are feeding people around the world. 
shooting these free throws right into the student body of Northwestern, but it doesn't detract from uh, Brian Evans making two free throws, 80% on the year. As he picks up his fifth point, Indiana has its biggest lead of the night, now at 14 points. Deion Lee, top of the key to Rankin. Nover dropping way back to help out. Here's Baldwin on the drive and a charge as Chris Reynolds got position inside for Indiana. Well, Northwestern really struggling on the half court offense right there. Rather than working the ball from side to side, making the Indiana defense work, they're trying to do too many things one on one, and they haven't had a good shot so far in the second it half. It seems, Sean, that it, Northwestern had their best offense when it was a high offense and no one's back to help. When the offense goes low, that's what can happen the charging foul. Well, Indiana is so good at uh, drawing, coming over from the weak side and drawing that. And even with a backdoor opportunity, Northwestern must be prepared to stop and take that five foot jumper rather than trying to take it all the way to the rim. Indiana in the motion offense. They go to Nover inside. He spins and wheels and gets it slapped away. Howe comes away with a two on one fast break. Here's Nellums. He loses control and Greg Graham has the steal. Coming the other way for Indiana. Quick pace here as Nover goes for the layup. And he draws the foul from Howe again on the block. That's going to be Howell's third. Lots of action here. Greg Graham once again playing up tempo, the kind of game he likes to play, finds Matt Nover, and this could be important for Nover to get involved in the offense some more. He hasn't been able to in the last two or three games. Needs to make a couple free throws and continue to concentrate on that offensive end. Big foul against Charles Howe. He has three now. Nover hits the first free throw. You can see a rarity as his field goal percentage is better. Then his free throw percentage. Misses on the second, so he's right on it at one of two with that season's average. Deion Lee with the rebound. Northwestern, Sean, now really does need to pick up the pace, though, to recover from this 15-point deficit. Well, there's another example right there of Kevin Rankin's ability to draw the defense, turn and face, and deliver the pass. The interior feed was a good one. The defender was playing behind Rankin. Did a little Sigma move, turn and faces up the defender. We'll see it coming up right here. Good interior feed, turns and faces on Nover. Little Sigma move. Good job of cutting the basket right there by Dion Lee. But when the, uh, when the defender slashes down like that on a double team, the person who is, whose man is leaving him to go for the double team must create a passing angle, make the defense pay. Dion Lee, he makes the first one. He's out of Louisville, Kentucky. He was an academic red shirt last year, so it's his first year playing with the injury to Todd Leslie, a knee injury. It really gave Dion Lee a chance to play. Todd Leslie will be out for the entire season for Northwestern. 44-30, Indiana leads by 14. Graham a fader from the baseline. Brian Evans leaps for the rebound and gets the putback. A couple things happen there. A lot of ball movement back and forth, making the defense work, which allows not only the shot by Graham, but also those kinds of rebound attempts by Evans. That's seven now for Brian Evans. Nellum's on a wheel. Gets around Reynolds, he misses the shot. Rankin comes up with a steal. And a block this time as Nellums tries to go up with it. The crowd not happy with the non-call there. And Bill Foster wants a timeout. With the score, Indiana 46, Northwestern 30. We'll be back after these messages. On the IU bench, you can see that left eye is starting to shut from swelling. So he won't be back in the ball game as he applies the ice there. So that'll be it for Henderson tonight. 46-30, Indiana by 16. We're at the 7:20 mark in the ball game. 17:20 left. Cheney on the drive, and a good steal by Northwestern. Ball went inside. He does what he does best to steal, and Cheney answers on the other end. Two on two fast break. Cheney pulls up and misses. And again, Baldwin slapped that away from Evans. Sean, he is so quick with those hands. Well, he reads the, the defender, the offensive player's eyes so very well. And anytime any player brings it below his waist, he's going to be slapping up with the ball, enabling him to flip the ball loose without drawing the foul. 
Nellums is in the corner. Dewey Williams, number 44 from North Central in Indianapolis, is in the ball game for the first time. Nellums on a leaner, draws nothing but net. Tough shot right there. His body wasn't really squared up to the basket, trying to draw the contact, but still knocked down the jumper. Reynolds on the drive, dishes off to Evans, about an eight-footer on the baseline. And Evans is able to make that one. 48-32, Indiana leads. Evans now with nine points. He's going to learn that move. By the time he's a senior, that's automatic. When that guard comes down the guts, get out, flare out there, and shoot the jumper. Here's Nellums with a jumper on the other side. That's what he does best for Northwestern. Good job of execution right there by Northwestern. Nice little curl cut off the screen. Nellums has 10, and the scoring starting to pick up here in the second half. Stop in action now. Dion Lee's going to pick up a foul. Reynolds tried to drive around the right. He's going to pick up his fourth foul. Damon Bailey checks in the lineup for Indiana. And Chris Reynolds leaves. There's Lee. He's going to come out now with four fouls. Kirkpatrick checks in for him. Lee not happy with that call. Bailey to trigger in. Near the sideline to Graham. Good look there at how Northwestern sets up their defense man to man. Cheney forces that one. And Dewey Williams with the rebound on the weak side. I tell you, whoever guards Calvert Cheney better put on their hat and helmet right there because they're going to be running off three and four screens, good legal screens. But not only are the screens really well set, but Calvert Cheney really uses them well. Comes off shoulder to shoulder. Good pass inside to Rankin. He goes up strong and finally draws the foul. Once that ball has gotten inside against Indiana's defense, that's when Northwestern's done their best job in scoring. Nice high-low feed right here to Dewey Williams. Kevin Rankin takes it up, not able to convert, stays with it, gets fouled once again. But Dewey Williams has really shown early on in his career here the ability to step up. He's not as comfortable playing with his back to the basket, is much more effective facing the basket. And Kevin Rankin and uh, Dewey Williams can really have really shown some good ability to execute the high-low. There's Bill Foster searching his bench. Uh, Sean Steve Green was known as a good jump shooter in his day, but it took two picks to get Steve open, where it only takes one to get Calvert open. <laughs> now, what's that supposed to be? <laughs> Ah, oh, you're hey, my buddy. I can Open do that. is open. <laughs> <laughs> okay, some more substitutions now for Northwestern. Brent Yaki, number 33, 6 8 freshman out of Burnsville, Minnesota in the lineup. Here's Williams outside on Evans. And he draws a nightmarish assignment. The freshman going up against the All-American Calvert Cheney. Uh, whistle inside. Damon Bailey's trying to post up inside on Kirkpatrick. Actually, Kirkpatrick at six foot five, about three inches bigger than Bailey. Ball out of bounds to Indiana. The 15 foul now on Northwestern. Here's the matchup Sean talked about. Bianchi, however, is Mr. Basketball in Minnesota last year. So he knows how to play the game. Here's Bailey on the drive. Dishes to Nover. A ball slipped out of his hand, but Baldwin will get called for the foul. Good solid ball movement there. Just it's tough to move with Steve, or without the ball. On those short passes, though, that's what makes it tough. You really have to be aware when that ball's coming in. Sure. Because it has to be crisp enough and hard enough to get through the defense, and yet you've got to be able to handle it on the other end. That's three on ball. So Northwestern picking up some foul trouble at the guard position. As Nover continues to struggle from that free throw line. See his average. Indiana's got the, all five of their stars in double figures. That's happened three times before, and each time Indiana's done that, they've won the Big Ten championship, and each time they've gone to the Final Four. So let's see if Indiana can keep that streak going. Again this year. Here's Northwestern. They're down 13. Good pass inside. This is Yankee on the layup. He misses it. And Northwestern doing a better job of fighting for that ball. Rankin's going to come up with it. He comes outside to Baldwin. Plenty of time there missed. Yonke on the tap. Evans tries to get the rebound and give it to Indiana. And now we're seeing some fighting on that basket. Well, that was a war in there. 
Northwestern doing an excellent job of being aggressive on the offensive glass. Brett Yonke not able to convert, but stayed with it. A lot of tips. That's what Northwestern needs to do. So much in the first half, they were one and done. They need every opportunity at the basket. They can get two or three, so much the better. Pass inside from Brian Evans. Greg Graham on the back cut. Easy two for Indiana, and Graham has his first two of the second half. He's got 18. No foul call there as Northwestern will keep it on the possession. Let's check it out here now. This is a nice pass from Evans into Graham, and that was a page out of the Northwestern offensive book. Just a good, solid back cut, quick, and a good pass. Howe back in for Northwestern. Nellum's on the shot. It's going to be fouled. And the crowd really liking Indiana finally being called for a foul. That one goes on Bailey. Well, you could hear nope. that one. That goes on Evans. That's his second. That foul not on Bailey. Two on Evans. Well, I'm 71% from that line. Sean, looked like that was a little flat. Is that his normal free throw uh, shot? Well, his shot is, is usually flat, but not quite that flat. You uh, needed a protractor and one of those straight edges to measure that one. Not a lot of trajectory. <laughs> a little better on that one as Nellums hits one out of two. 51-37, Indiana leads. 14 minutes left in the half. In the game, Nellums has 11 for the night. Graham brings it back out to measure up this defense. A 1-2-2 zone by Northwestern. Cheney having a tough night. He's one of nine from the field. And this time, though, he hits on the baseline to go two for 10, only his fifth point of the ball game. Sometimes when you just take one dribble and shoot, it's not a good shot for a, a shooter like Calvert. But that time, it, he got his legs set and got up and in into, into it. He almost used a rhythm dribble right there to get his legs under him. Baldwin gets that last hoop for Northwestern. He's got 10 on the game. Quick action, quick paced action here by both teams. Cheney with a tough shot there. And here's a one on one. Nellums has it. And he converts it as the cross dribble gets him open for the layup. Sutter Nellums is rewarded right there because his defensive pressure forced Calvert Cheney into a tough shot behind the backboard. Then he runs the floor and scores on the offensive end. The pace is quicker, giving Northwestern a chance to get back in the game. They're down by 12, and the crowd starts to get in it. Bailey forces a shot. It's partially blocked, but also the foul. Now, I just read Coach Knight's lips, which I became very adept at in my four <laughs> years at IU, but he said good shots. And I think those last two, one by Damon and one by Calvert, didn't fit that. There's Damon going up, and it was well defended. I know what he's trying to do there. He's trying to draw a little action to him, trying to force something to get going, but it just isn't an effective, and especially on the heels of Calvert's poor shot. Here's Cedric Nelms in the open floor, taking a right at the rim. Evans no match with him in the open court, but right there, Cedric Nelms was rewarded, as we said earlier, with good defensive pressure and the ability to release early. Rankin picks up his first foul, and Bailey makes his first free throw. Bailey has recently joined the 1,000-point club at Indiana as he now becomes the 30th player to do that in Indiana history. Substitution for Northwestern. Eric Simpson back in for Baldwin. And Northwestern brings it up. They're down 14 points, 12.45 left. Indiana in their man-to-man -man defense. Howe's got position inside the jump hook. Good turn to the middle. And good interior feed by Dewey Williams from the high post. Bent down, executed the bounce pass to perfection. Big play right here for Northwestern because you've got Pat Baldwin on the bench. And Kevin Rankin. And Rankin. Bailey gives it up to Graham. There's a four shot that's missed. So Indiana not getting the shot that you had talked about, Steve Green. Yeah. Not good shots. Not the kind of patience on offense they need to have here, especially with Baldwin and Rankin on the bench. You don't want to give Northwestern an opportunity to stay close. They're getting their rest right now. This group in there doing a nice job. Here's Dewey Williams, Powell, and Kirkpatrick again. This high offense seems to work best for them, Sean Morris. 
But they're really trying to shorten the game, spread the defense out, milk the shot clock down. With about 10 seconds, they'll make their move toward the basket. It's at 13 now, and a tough pass there. The bounce pass tipped off of Williams, out of bounds to Indiana. With the score, Indiana 55, Northwestern 43. We'll be back after these messages. This is the Raycom Sports Network. Three other Big Ten games played earlier today, so a shuffling of the Big Ten standings. Wait a minute, <laughs> who are those two guys? That's the Indiana Press Guide in 1975. And that's John, that's myself there on the left, Dr. Steve Green on the right, and where have the years gone, Doctor? Oh, they've flown by all right. <laughs> Faster for some well, than others. <laughs> we thought we were coming with the Big Ten standings. Yeah. That's a little a trick there in the truck. Thanks, guys. Yeah, thank you, fellas. Okay, we're back to action. 11.30 left in this ball game. The lead down to, about down to 12 now for Indiana. Foul on the play by Northwestern. Here's second half shooting. Both teams struggling. There's not a whole lot to jump up and down about there. Of course, defense plays a big part in that. But from Indiana's perspective, they've taken some bad shots. Northwestern's perspective, they've missed some real easy ones. That foul goes on Nellums, his first. That puts Cheney on the line. Bounces that one around and gets it to go. 18 fouls for Northwestern, so Indiana's still in the one and one. Cheney hits two, he now has seven. A season low 11 against Minnesota, Steve Green, and only seven tonight. Yeah, I was real surprised the way Calvert came out tonight and not able to get his jump shots going early. It's just been a struggle. Could be in just one of those two or three game periods. Hopefully just the two games. Howell with the jump hook is missed this time. Evans on the board, Indiana with the fast break, three on two. Good steal by Baldwin, anticipating the pass. Two on two at the other end. Baldwin pulls it up. Howe fights for the board. Ball still loose. Kirkpatrick gets it to Baldwin, and he cans the jumper. Good execution right there. Good hustle right there by Northwestern. They just outstrapped, got to the basketball. A couple people go on the floor. They're able to convert the basket, but initially that was set up by not a good jump shot by Pat Baldwin. Did not have the numbers. 12 now for Baldwin. And the tussle inside, Nelms really working on Cheney. He's gonna draw another foul here and send Cheney back to the line. Indiana won both games last year, each game by over 30 points, but Sean, I think those days are over as Bill Foster's brought some good talent in here and this team's playing pretty well together. Not only good talent, but the more quality talent. He's able to go a little bit deeper on his bench and next year they've got a great kid, uh, big kid coming in from Ohio and Evan Eschmeyer. So the, all these kids right here will be back. But watching away from the ball, uh, not, to, not to take anything away from Calvert Cheney, he's a great player, but boy, does he really know how to use screens. And his teammates do a great job of knowing their role in the offense and freeing him up. And I tell you what, I really appreciate it more because right now I couldn't guard a refrigerator door and Cedric Nelms <laughs> is out there trying to check him. Cheney has nine now as he hits the free throw. 10-33 left, 59-45. Indiana leads, well-contested game. And again, Northwestern is able to go inside. Great move by Rankin. He fakes to the right, comes back to the left. Against triple coverage, right there you see the, the benefits of off-season conditioning. If you notice, Kevin Rankin's up to about 265. That was a lot of strength. A year ago, he may not have been able to convert that play. Indiana counters at the other end on the post play to Nover, and this time Rankin's going to draw the foul on the block. And Steve, this is really a pattern that Indiana has used in the second half. 
uh, against Minnesota, we saw the same thing. That's 10 team fouls now on Northwestern. Indiana has three, and so Indiana spends a lot of time on that free throw line. Yeah, and it comes from being aware of when to take it to the hoop. And each possession, each offensive possession, you've got to be thinking about that. And as well, Indiana always has run more of an inside game anyway, looking for the forwards and centers in their offense. Leary comes in for Bailey as Nover goes to the line. In the second half of the last six ball games for Indiana, they've shot 59% from the field and 80% from the free throw line. And that's the reason that they now stand 7-0 in Big Ten play. Nover hits the second one, give him seven points on the night. A little full court pressure by Reynolds. You know, going and back to an earlier point of Sean's, with all the picks that you have to fight through defensively against Indiana, you know, by the time the, the last 10 minutes of a game comes around, you might have fatigued the opposing team. 10 minutes left. Now Nellums takes the shot. Cheney has the rebound. Indiana starts to bring it up quickly. And Reynolds comes back outside with it. 13-point Indiana lead. Man-to-man -man defense by Northwestern. Here's Cheney. Goes up and over Nellums and hits the shot. 62-47 Indiana. Cheney now has 11 points, so he's starting to score here down the stretch. And there's that rhythm dribble again. I like that phrase of yours, Sean, because he did need to get that one dribble in just to get the legs underneath him and get into some kind of rhythm. Kirkpatrick misses from the outside, and Indiana's going to get it out of bounds. Greg Graham checks in for Indiana. There's Bill Foster. 51 and 131 here at Northwestern. And there's Graham as he brings the ball up. Todd Leary checks out for Indiana. Reynolds inside to Cheney. He spins, and he's got another one. And the foul. Calvert Cheney now with 11. And one of the things, Steve, we've seen, when Calvert Cheney gets hot, he likes it every time down the floor, and he is a streaky scorer. Yeah, and there was no question that time. Indiana's looking for Calvert. He's made a couple in a row. He's starting to get into a little bit of a groove. And why not? The guy's produced throughout his career for Indiana. Great offensive player. Kirkpatrick picks up his fourth foul. And Indiana back on the line. 65-47. Indiana now their biggest lead at 18 points. Nine minutes left in the game. High offense by Northwestern. Rankin and Howell up at the free throw line. The back picks. Trying to get the guards open on the back door play. Here it is by Kirkpatrick. But a five-second call. Uh, against Northwestern, Graham applying the pressure. Costly turnover for the Wildcats as Indiana starts to build a lead here. And the Evans back outside to Graham. This is where Indiana can use some time off that clock unless you get the ball to Cheney in the lane. Now, three times in a row now, Indiana's yeah. done that. And those moves are so much different than the first five or ten minutes or even the first half of this ball game. Quick, confident. He's in his rhythm. Uh, nice little left-hand shot there once again. Great up and under footwork move right there. Showing and going, going left, coming back with his right hand. The thing I'm most impressed with, and there's a lot to be impressed with with Calvert Cheney, is his ability to stop and then elevate over the defender. Even though someone may have good position on him, he's still able to create a shot for himself. Cedric Nellum scored that last time down for Northwestern. Now Evans open it for three in the corner. He misses it. And out of bounds to Northwestern. All right, we've got a timeout. Indiana 67, Northwestern 49. We'll be back after these messages. Again, close behind Illinois with the victory today, moves to 5-2, and, and Wisconsin starting to separate themselves from the pack because after that, the teams are at or below 500. Northwestern there still looking for that first Big Ten victory. Let's take a look at some foul trouble now. Not so much for Indiana, but Sean, Northwestern's got some guys in trouble. With Dion Lee, because of the foul trouble, has basically been a non-factor this evening. And with Kip Kirkpatrick with four, Coach Bill Foster's going to be forced in the event that he picks up his fifth to go even deeper into his bench, which at this point is not very uh, deep to begin with. He's done it now. Matt Purdy's in the lineup. 
And so is T.J. Rayford. As Purdy misses that shot from the outside, Reynolds has the board. Indiana on the break, slows it down. Inside to Nover. This is where Indiana can start to take a little time. 7.20 left. Looking for a good shot. Or Calvert Cheney, whichever comes first. This time, though, Northwestern knocks it away. Nellums goes for the save and steps on the line. So Indiana gets a break there. Well, that time Calvert tried to do just a little bit too much. Uh, the thing you have to like if you're an Indiana fan there is that he ran the offense and let Calvert touch it. I think that it's a great thing to have Calvert Cheney at least touching the ball each time down, or as many times as possible. Turnover's about even, and Brian Evans fights for position inside, and he gets a jumper. He's got 11. Indiana leads now by 20. Just under seven minutes left in the game. Baldwin on the outside. He loves that drive, and he likes that one-handed floating shot, Sean. But that was created right there by he's knocked down a few perimeter jump shots. Indiana realizes they have to respect that good shot fake, puts the ball on the floor, beats the defender, gets in the lane, as you said, John, really created nicely with the right hand. 14 now for Baldwin. Cheney again on the turn. And that soft jumper, we've seen it so many times, Steve, float on that rim, and then he gets the roll. You know, his shooting right now is as much important for the upcoming games as it is to this game. He's getting his confidence back, and the way the first half went, you may have thought, well, this is going to be two games in a row where he's not shooting well, but he's bounced back in this second half, and that's going to carry over into his next game. Okay, Damon Bailey checks in for Indiana. Brian Evans leaves. And Baldwin leaves now as Eric Simpson checks back in for Northwestern. 71 51, 620 left in the game. Northwestern continues to pound it inside. TJ Rayford that time with the shot, but Matt Nover with the clean block, and Indiana brings it up. Indiana looks inside, Nover not open. Graham fakes on the three. Bailey likes to work inside. He's off the dribble. Tough pass to Nover. And there's a foul on that shot. It's going to go on Simpson, his first free throws for the game. A big stat, Steve. Indiana again dominating the free throw stat. You know, anytime Indiana goes to the line, 20, 25, 30 times in a game. That's according to their plan. That's what they'd like to see in every game. Get up to the free throw line. That means they're working their offense. They're getting it to the people that can make the short shots and also can get to the line. With that free throw, Indiana Soybean Farmers remind you that soybean products are good for you and the environment. will donate $50 to Gleaners to help feed hungry people statewide. $1,350 so far in tonight's ball game, so a good night for Indiana free throws. 73-51, Indiana up by 22 now. The defense still hanging tough for Indiana. Northwestern trying to answer quickly here. Rankins outside. Nellums will try with three, and he's got it from the outside. Nellums a deadly shooter from that range. 18 for Cedric Nellums. Indiana slows it down at the other end. Reynolds on the drive. He dishes to Graham. He's open. And that's a three as he equals out the last play by Nellums. 21 points for Greg Graham. Another long one this time by Dion Lee. And he missed it. After the game, stop by your neighborhood 76 station for quality 76 gasolines or convenience items. Air ball that time gives the ball out of bounds to Indiana. Pat Knight checks in for Greg Graham. So Reynolds and Pat Knight will be at the guards. Graham leaves with a game high 21. No better feeling to sit on that bench with a 21-point game, huh, Steve? I bet you did that a few times. A couple times. Always enjoyed it. Just doing my part. Hey, for a guy who never saw a shot he didn't like, <laughs> I'll tell you, that's pretty good. 
Calvert Cheney on the baseline again. He's got 20. So he's really come on strong here in this second half when Indiana needed him. Here's Rankin inside. I really like him, Sean. He has improved, and you cannot stop a 6'11 guy like him that close to the basket. Well, there's another example of how he's progressed as a player. A year ago, he might have taken a dribble, giving the defender a chance to come over and defend him. But he took it right to the basket strong and did not drop the ball below his waist. Reynolds had that pass deflected and stolen by Northwestern. Nellums again wants to try a three. He comes up short this time. Good leaping by Baldwin that time as he comes up with the rebound, giving Northwestern a second possession. Nellums again on Knight. Bank shot is missed. It's Purdy with the rebound, and he gets it off the glass. Back in Indiana, we call that the bank is open. Straight away, and he gets it to go. Even on Saturday nights. Even on Saturday nights. 78-58, Indiana leads. Bailey on the drive, and Deion Lee's gonna pick up a foul. If so, that'll be his fifth. Well, unfortunately for the Northwestern Wildcats, Deion Lee was not able to be as big a factor as they would have hoped coming into this game, simply due to foul trouble. He picked up three very quick fouls in the first half, basically sat out the majority of the first half, came out and got his fourth with about three minutes gone in this half, was not able to play a lot of minutes. Only three points, gets a good hand from the Northwestern crowd. He'll be back to play another time against these Hoosiers. Bailey gets up to the line. That's always so tough when you see a young man like Deion Lee there that has foul trouble all night in the big game. It's a game you look forward to, probably a week you look forward to, with Purdue and IU both coming in here, and then not to be able to show your wares because of foul trouble. Sure, sure. Bailey hits two and now has six. Indiana leads 80 to 58. We'll be back after these messages. This is the Raycom Sports Network. All make visits to Bloomington. Our next telecast will be next Saturday night at 8 o'clock from the Carver Hawkeye Arena as Indiana takes on the Iowa Hawkeyes. Be sure to join us for that one. Three-point shooting, both teams are struggling. Indiana not taking nearly as many as they have earlier in the Big Ten season. But you know, that's an example of both teams' philosophies tonight. Let's get the ball underneath. Let's start our offenses by making our underneath people get things going. Baldwin hit the jumper, and then he gets called for his fourth foul. Get some instructions from Bill Foster. There's Coach Bob Knight on the Indiana bench. Looks up at that scoreboard and eyeing his 607th career victory as Leary nails the first free throw. About halfway through this Big Ten season now, Steve Green, Indiana alone on top if they continue to hold on here for an 8-0 record. Uh, but Michigan still lurking into that one loss. Sure, on Valentine's Day, how sweet that the Wolverines and the Hoosiers get together on Michigan the 14th. Michigan will be in Bloomington on that Sunday. Kirkpatrick outside, misses that shot. Indiana on the board. Pat Knight outside, good D by Purdy as he has the pressure. Bailey fading away with that shot, comes up way short. Cheney fights for the rebound, and he will again draw the foul. And I can tell you, what I think was going through Calvert Cheney's mind here when he is trying to struggle and get this basketball. He's thinking, okay, I got this. I am gonna get it up somehow. I don't know where or when. There, there we go, over the back. Over the shoulder so, there. Yeah, huh? one way or another, as soon as that ball got in his hands, pass was not the first thing on his mind. He likes to get, have been. to get to that line. Kirkpatrick fouls out with two points, and Yonke checks in for him. Cheney will be at the line. He's had a great second half. He only had three, uh, he had three points at the half. And now he's shooting for his 21st, so he's going for his season average right now. Well, even more fantastic, I think the first 10 minutes of the second half, he didn't have a whole so bunch all, of points, so it's, it's all come here 
at an opportune time for Indiana. And he's going to come out right now as he leaves the game with 22 points and some congratulations from the bench and Coach Bob Knight. 84 to 60, 242 left. And Northwestern on the offense. Nellum's on the drive and the shot. Good quickness, Sean. He, he's a good shooter, but he's also good off the dribble. Well, he's really a slashing type of player. Wants to put the ball on the floor and take it right to the rim. 20 for Nellums, and he's only a sophomore, so he'll be back for a couple more years. Another whistle inside. This crew has been busy today. Dewey Williams checks in for Northwestern. That foul goes on Matt Purdy. He leaves with three fouls. Nover bounces that first one in for his 10th point. Anything you see on that free throw form, Steve, uh, uh, that might be causing some, Matt some problems this year? Well, I liked what I saw there, the follow through. At that time, a little quick with the legs. Just he got into the follow through without the the proper mechanics right before it, and that is get those legs underneath. Here's Yonke outside for three. He's off the rim, and Reynolds has the board. 2-10 left. Tough pass that time by Pat Knight. It goes off of Matt Nover, and Northwestern has it. Bob Knight not happy. And again, Steve, it doesn't really matter what the score is. He likes to see that team play without watching the scoreboard, so even mistakes late in the ball game. Uh, are uncalled for. Here's Baldwin with the shot, Rankin on the rebound, and Bailey with the foul. You know, Sean and Laz, we've talked about Rankin tonight, uh, the improvement he's made, and really a good, solid player. And this, he's only a junior, but let's let's don't forget that last year I think he was third team All Big Ten, so he had a, a fine year last year too. Well, Coach Bill Foster really compares him uh, to a player he had earlier in his career at Duke. A guy by the name of Mike Jaminski, and that's pretty heady company. But uh, a lot of things that they have in common, if you notice, Kevin Rankin has the ability to step out on the floor at 6'11 and pass, create a few things off the dribble, and knock down that intermediate jump shot. A lot of people feel that if he keeps improving, building his strength and stamina, he may have a future playing at the professional level with this game because he has some size and a great work ethic. He gets both those free throws for 10 points. Full court pressure by Northwestern. Indiana gets it to Reynolds as he breaks the pressure. Leary takes a bomb from the outside and misses. And Rankin's got the board. Here's Baldwin quickly down to Nellums. Quick shot is missed. Dewey Williams with the tip. So Northwestern coming with some offense. A long pass by Pat Knight. Uh -oh. Cannot be caught by Leary. Another turnover for Indiana. And since no one touched it, that ball comes all the way back under the Northwestern basket. Bob Knight is off the bench. And Sean and Steve have no comment. <laughs> Picture says it all, oh, right? That's right. Inbounds, here's Baldwin. A fader is missed, and that's Yonke with the shot on the tip, but they're going to call him for over the back against Damon Bailey. Bailey may have caught an elbow on top of the head. Let's look. Well, Pat Baldwin squaring up right here. That's a foul a coach really doesn't mind. It's a foul of aggression. He's going to the offensive glass. And Brett Yonke, you know, really getting some minutes as a freshman. And, uh, you know, you take a look at things. Any freshman coming into this league a year ago, he's back in Minnesota. He's the guy. And you're, you're coming in and you're playing against, you know, one of the top five teams in the country. And uh, it's quite a different experience. Bailey's been good from the line tonight. He's got seven points. Only one field goal. And he misses on that second one. 86-66, Indiana with the 20-point lead. 120 left in this ball game. A hard-fought game by both teams. Indiana kind of wore down Northwestern here in this second half. And the crowd is very pleased with this rash of fouls that have been called on Indiana here lately. And they're letting the officials know that. Although a lot of Indiana contingent here also, Steve. I think I, there's just a bit of sarcasm in that <laughs> round of applause as it goes up from the, oh, from the Northwestern faithful. Oh. That's Cedric Nellums who leaves now. 
with 20 points. So he came on uh, nicely in the second half for Northwestern. Rankin hits that free throw. Good look at Nellums. Only a sophomore. He led the Wildcats in scoring last year. The first freshman to do that since Billy McKinney. And what a scorer he was for Northwestern. Full court pressure. 86-68 as we approach the one minute mark. Bailey over to Reynolds, back outside to Larry. And inside now to Pat Knight, reverse layup as he got through three Northwestern defenders for his first two. Pass to Rankin, goes off his chest. Bailey picks it up two on one, dishes to Reynolds. And Indiana scores two baskets quickly there, 90 to 68. And they will, in fact, go 8 0 and continue to lead the Big Ten race. Nice Another give and, give go. and go. That's Sir by Rankin and Baldwin. Sean, uh, they must work on that play a lot in practice. That's just a great play right there. Nice catch in traffic by Kevin Rankin. Really not a whole lot of uh, trickery on this play. He just catches it, little V cut and goes. And that's a tough pass in oh, close quarters. Tough. You know, not, not only is it a tough pass to make, but that's a tough pass to catch. I mean, you're very close in there, and it's not a bounce pass. You've got to have your hands up. Great athletic play. Baldwin converts with 19 points, so some pretty good scoring here by the Wildcats. Bailey on the drive, and the dish goes out of bounds. Tipped by Northwestern. 26 seconds. Comes into Leary. Tries to get around Simpson. See if Indiana takes another shot. Down to 10 seconds. Nover's got it. Pat Knight. He passes. Now Leary for three, and he's got it. And that's going to do it for the Indiana Hoosiers. They're winning 93-71. The two coaches meet at midcourt. We'll be back after these messages.